actually causing you to have inflammation and lethargic and all, you, know, like you want to go back to sleep. I was all up in that for so long to the point where I was taking like three hour naps per day. Wow. And I would wake up and I had convinced myself, especially when I was pregnant, but even before and after that I needed to eat when I woke up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And so mm. I would go and have like one, sometimes two bowls of cereal and then go back to sleep. And I was so lethargic. I was so, like, I had this natural, this is my natural energy too, Yeah. but I would crash and I would sleep upwards of anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a night with Two, wow. new, two newborns, like two toddler and newborn. And people are always like, how do you sleep? I'm like, when they nap, I nap when they, every single time there is no getting around it. And it wasn't until I started releasing the genres of food that were actually mm. attached to my energy. And my husband actually got me to do the things and practice the way of eating that he had for so long, um, mm. that it shifted not only my well being and my mindset towards food, but also uh, my body image. And, mm -hmm. and how I was utilizing my body as a vessel. This was like, almost like a, you can see even in pictures, it's like pre-Jesus, post-Jesus. <laughs> and I, and then it's, it's not necessarily that Jesus changed my body, but there was a new sense of stewardship that I had mm -hmm. in my body yes. that was not there before. And I was also suppressed in shame based on body image, based on expectations of women and our body image. And so I'd be curious as you work with women, how has how has like culture shaped what they think their body should be or how they're eating? Even mm. even talking about alcohol being like a mm. natural coping mechanism, like everyone goes to happy hour. So I'll go to happy hour mm. and happy hour is not just an hour. It's five hours. Oh, wow. That's so much to <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, there's a lot here. I think when I came to faith, one of the things that drew me to faith was really being so disgusted and fed up with like the culture of sexuality, totally. like, and the lack of sacredness around sexuality and the just like demeanment and debasement of both men and women, like their sacredness. Right. That's good. It's a beautiful word. Yeah. And, and that was honestly the thing that even led me to faith. Like that was my path to Jesus was this like, sexuality is sacred. I kept getting that message from God. Wow. Yeah. I was like, where's this coming from? Like I've, yeah. been, I've been an atheist for 30 <laughs> yeah. years. Like, wow. Weird. That's amazing. Yeah. And I still feel that very deeply inside me. Like there's this strong revulsion I have to the exploitation of bodies. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, I see that played out in advertising, marketing, entertainment, indoctr indoctrination of women that, you know, our bodies are here to gratify others, gratify men, gratify employers, gratify, you know, our parents, gratify all these people. And, and one of the things that ha has helped me body image wise, like I want to look my best naked for my future husband. Okay? I love it. Yes. <laughs> um, like I want my body as a gift that I will give to him and yes. share with him and same with my sexuality. But I also, um, I also have discovered that dressing more modestly has actually made me have better body image. Mm, I love that. And not like a have to, I'm not here to be like, you know, shame somebody for what they're wearing, but yeah. cause I, I'll wear a bikini at the pool, whatever. Sure, sure. But in general, I have found that, Oh, you know what? My, I don't have to show my body to society. Yeah. Like, that's my really body cool. is not on display for you. Yeah. That's really beautiful. And, and interestingly, because of past history to myself, and I don't know how much of my story, you know, um, but the book that I just released always becoming sex, shame, and love talks a lot about the sexual piece to cultural um, expectations that I placed on my body based on mm. sexual trauma, but also based on pornography and then cyber sex and like all of these pieces that I've realized the more that I share is actually not me, Tamara, in a cyclone. You're the odd one out. It's more so we've all experienced it, but we don't know how to talk about it. 